The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tammy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got 24 minutes to go until the opening bell. We got some PPI prices this morning. We got some jobless claims this morning. Markets a little bit in positive territory. s and is up by 15 points right now. You see the volatility at 8.30. These are five-minute bars. Let's zoom in on the action. You spike to 41.38. You spike to about 41.19. We're pushing the upper boundary of that price action. 41.34, you're positive by about four tenths percent in the S&Ps. Remember, we get retail sales tomorrow. We get bank earnings kicking things off tomorrow. Quite a CPI number in terms of the action in the market yesterday. Going to be interesting to see where we go today after quite the sell-off yesterday throughout the entire day almost. We got some pops, man, but negative action after quite the pop and quite the decent CPI numbers. We got some decent PPI numbers to follow this morning. We got jobless claims, but maybe that's the rotation, folks. Maybe this is the rotation in terms of seeing where the numbers are going to start waning on inflation. And the market is going to say, okay, that's great, but you saw it yesterday, man. Where it said that's great but what if this is the turn and the turn comes quickly sometimes man there might be a lag boy but when it takes over it can take over quickly and we'll get into some of those ppi numbers in particular later in the program um because some soft numbers to put it lightly we have the dow right now up 79 points that's a two tenth percent positive in the dow you get the nasdaq almost six tenths percent we get the russell six tenths percent in the positive as well how about bitcoin catching a bid again thirty thousand five forty five you have ethereum Look at that high. Saw something out there on Ethereum. You got a split going on or something like that? I had a headline up here earlier. Uh, what do we got going on? I'll find the headline. But Ethereum trading higher. Some do. Some some split. Maybe somebody has it in the den. Uh, there is some fundamental news on that. 2021. Quite a run for Ethereum. Up almost 6% right now. Crude. Hanging right near $83. $82.98. Gold contract. Check it out. We got a weak dollar this morning, man. 2056 that gold contract you talk about a pop of 32 dollars we just hit 2060 i'll jump to the dollar in a moment notes and bonds the 10-year up about eight ticks almost to the spike high we got yesterday what did we do yesterday we gave it all up be interesting if we gave it all up today in terms of the 10-year how about the 30-year yesterday the 30-year yesterday hit 133.15 and traded down two full points two full points from that spike to 131.15. And what are we doing? We're inching towards 133. Yet again on the 30, a remarkable action on notes and bonds. We jump over to the VIX. All things considered, not that bad. 18.55 in the VIX. We had some real sell-offs in the S&P yesterday, and you saw some volatility on the VIX, but nothing too concrete. As we went from about 18.60 to 19.40, we're back to about 18.60 this morning on the volatility index. We jump over to that dollar index, because boy, currencies, we got some action in currencies, man. 101.03. On the dollar index, that's a full point. Even more so from where you were yesterday, let alone you're talking about almost three full points from where you were on Monday. You talk about some action, man. Check out the daily, right? The lows back in February, 182. We're pushing those lows right now in the dollar index. And when you look at some of the biggest components, yeah, the euro, new recent highs, man, 110. Remember we were talking about 95, 110. Quite a rise, everything. Uh, getting more expensive in Europe if you're translating um, tra um, trading dollars for your euros over there. Let's back it up even a little further. Yeah, you're all the way back to where we were over a year ago in the euro. Absolutely remarkable. The run we're getting the currencies is we got dollar weakness across the board. We got markets in positive territory. And let's jump into some of the economic data this morning. Jobless claims, 239,000, led by a jump in California. Continuing claims actually down. <laughs> that's, I don't know if that's how things are supposed to go. Uh, initial unemployment claims rising 11,000 to 239,000. Market was looking for about 235, so pretty close to in line. Continuing claims, now those are one week delayed, okay? 
falling to 1.81 million for the week ended April 1st. Maybe there's a little bit of lag, maybe one week may make the difference. On an adjusted basis, claims jumped by more than 27,000 to 234,577. California accounted for more than a third of the increase. Yeah, and it can be choppy. The four week moving average for 240,000. It's nothing too concrete. In terms of in a healthy economy, you're churning something like 200,000 just in terms of the churn of people changing jobs with, as part of a healthy economy. We're just above that number. We had been below 200,000 for a while. Um, and we'll see where we go from there. But nonetheless, we got 240,000 and we got some PPI numbers we're going to get into later in the program because those are some decent numbers as well. But what we are dealing with, folks, is quite the sell-off yesterday, okay? And you had some decent CPI numbers, to put it lightly. I'm just going to put this in context here. Now, I talked about the VIX, right? The VIX never got above 18 or 19. We had two different sell-offs, folks, to the tune of like almost 40 or 50 points yesterday intraday. The first one, pre-market, okay? But you came into the opening bell still at 41.60, and you trade down almost 4120. You went right back up to 4153. And what'd you do? You trade down another 40 points. A to B, C to D, basically intraday in the S&Ps after a pretty decent CPI number. So fundamentally, right, your brain said to myself, so what does this mean? Well, if it was all about inflation and the Fed, that market would have loved that spike and it would have stayed up there. But at some point, okay, the Fed cooling the economy is going to matter when we're talking about earnings, when we're talking about profits, when we're talking about margins, and we still have some pretty lofty numbers when you talk about the numbers that we're dealing with in inflation. Core number was up last month. Core number was up 5.6% in March versus 5.5 in February. We've become so used to 8%, 9%, 6%, 7%, 5%. Now we're seeing headline numbers that are on their way down. We're seeing month over month numbers that would indicate that maybe we're out of the woodwork. And then you see a core number going up from February to March from 5.5 to 5.6. To get to two, there's going to be a lot of work to be done. That work might start coming, folks, though, in a big way. In terms of the economy getting squashed, okay, in terms of the impact being felt. Now, I talked about this one on Monday, I think, uh, talking about the money supply, right? This is M2 money supply, and I'll pull up M2 versus M3 um, definition money supply. Why not? I'll pull it up as we speak. Uh, let me get it right. But folks, money supply matters, okay? And you can't tell me that this spike had nothing to do with the generational inflation that we haven't felt in my lifetime, okay? And you can't tell me that on the flip side it's not gonna matter as well. There's just no possible way that's gonna be the scenario in my opinion, okay? Now, you tie that into what's going on, right? So M2 is the Federal Reserve's estimate of total money supply, including all of the cash people have on hand, plus all the money deposited in checking accounts, savings accounts, and other short-term saving vehicles such as CDs. Retirement account balances and time de deposits above 100000 are omitted from M2. So it's short-term cash cycling around in the economy. Uh, we're going to talk to our man, Kevin Hanks. We'll have a little bit more discussion about this after we talk to our man, Kevin. We're coming back, folks. We'll talk a little bit of fast market from Kevin Hanks. Stay tuned. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory. S&P is up about 11 points. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, the TD Ameritrade Network, fast market right here on Tiger TV. Your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, folks. They got great guests. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups. And I know I say it. We talked to Kevin Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. If you ever want to learn about options, folks, check out the program. There's no better way than going through trade setups that they go through, talking about trade management, rolling, whatever it be. Uh, Kevin Hinks, when I talked to you yesterday morning, man, we had markets in rosy territory. By the end of the day, we gave up about 1%. Today, we got some more uh, PPI numbers. What do you think of the action, man? Corey, Tommy, yeah, unfortunately... Today's numbers, even though the market is higher right now, today's numbers show a lot of the same underlying data that yesterday's numbers shown. What do I mean by that? Well, the month-over-month -month numbers, the year-over-year, -year, are pretty impressive in terms of PPI month-over-month -month down a half percent. Year-over-year -year, from 4.6 to 2.7 percent. That's a big move in year-over-year -year PPI. X Food and Energy down a tenth. Uh, year over year, X Food and Energy 4.4 to 3.4. X Food and Energy and Trade Services uh, up a tenth of a percent from 4.4 to 3.6. Now, here's the problem, Tommy. If you look at final demand goods down 1%, that is again, like yesterday, dominated by energy. Final demand energy down 6.4%. If you look final demand less food and energy up 0.3. Final demand foods up 0.6. So if you think about that, therein lies the problem, Tommy. The, these numbers, these big reductions in the producer price index are dominated by energy that po possibly since this number came out, crude oil has moved from $70 to now $83, Tommy. So there could be some storm clouds on the horizon in terms of the fight against inflation. And folks, you heard storm clouds yesterday, and you saw what could happen in the market. And it is pretty, that year over year number, right, Kevin? And the market, yeah, we get a little bit of a lift. But there used to be a time, man, you got year over year numbers, maybe like that, if they indicated a real transition, because that's the one that I said, my goodness, how does that even happen, right? Well, you just explained it, man. We got some real influences in there. Energy is a big one. It's been a one-way trip for like a year almost to down prices, um, lower prices, and now we got some rising right. prices. We'll 
we'll see how we go from there, man. Uh, with that, Kevin, we've been talking about it. We got some companies with their numbers, but the banks kick it off tomorrow. We get some retail sales coming out tomorrow as well, and then boom, we go right into the season. What are you guys talking about on Fast Market coming up at 12 today, man? Like Folio will do a, a little different take. They don't cover the, the financials very much, so they're going to cover Shopify in their section, a really good uh, competitor to things like Amazon and eBay and these online shoppers. But then in the first and third segments, we're going to talk J.P. Morgan. We're going to talk Citigroup, and we'll go through uh, their expectations for earnings tomorrow morning. So, yeah, we, we finally made it, Tommy, the chasm between earning seasons is finally over and we have some earnings to look at jp morgan and citigroup uh like folio talking about shopify and folks shopify so tfnn we use shopify as our platform great platform very user friendly allows us to do a lot i got the chart up here kevin going back five years on the thinkorswim platform from 11 bucks to 176 dollars back to 45 dollars uh, what do you think of Shopify um, taking a look at this chart, man? Like many growth stocks, really taking it on the chin. But as you said, you know, a decent company. And I tell you, folks, it's not going away. As in, we use it. It's an outstanding platform. I know many people do. But, boy, quite a pullback with some of those equities, Kevin. And you're off of a low of, boy, i got to pull it up right here, $23. Remarkable. Right. In October, it got, so it almost got up below on. $30 at one point. 23 I got yeah, another thing to swim. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Tommy, this is a company that unfortunately fell into that category that got punished, which is growth, right? They're a young company. They're growing like a weed. But until, you know, what got rewarded in these markets is profitable companies and companies showing cash flow. And Shopify didn't necessarily have that at the time. Now, that doesn't mean this company doesn't have a promising future. Uh, that's still uncertain. But, boy, they are growing at an incredible pace and the overall uh reaction from customers is extremely positive yeah and you're hearing it from a customer man you know in the same way so it's pretty cool we use it i know our customers you know our customers down the line using that platform they're in through tfnn.com it is remarkable kevin how so many of these companies back to almost prior to the pandemic, when you look to be perfectly positioned, online growth, Zoom comes to mind as well, um, among many others, not to single them out, but quite the run. And like Folio, you'll have to ask them, Kevin, um, they might not study it, but I would love to know the consumer sentiments around some of those big banks with everything losing, looming out there. I say it in jest, but it is pretty interesting. We come into bank earnings tomorrow, man. We look forward to the program, Kevin. I appreciate the time on a busy morning as always. And we don't talk to you till Tuesday, so it's going to be exciting where we'll be on Tuesday, man. Have a great one. Have a great weekend, Kevin. We'll be watching at 12, man. You too, Tommy. Thanks so much. Folks, tune in every trading day, 12 o'clock. We are coming into earnings season right now. It's the best time to check out the program. And I always say, too, if you don't want to actively trade options, there's a tremendous amount of information that you can learn from understanding how they trade and applying that information to whatever it is, equities, okay, and just uh, the market beyond, because understanding risk reward, premiums, uh, delta, theta, all of those, and how they're priced into uh, an option, which leads to basically how the market is pricing expected moves for the underlying equities. It's a tremendous amount of information. And that's why I love talking to Kevin three times a week, man. We are privileged to have his time, I tell you, folks, because that's a half hour right there at a time when, let me tell you, doing this program 15 minutes before the market opened as a trader, and I know Kevin is still a trader, okay? Uh, yeah, it's valuable time, and he gives it to us every day, and I know they're a sponsor, folks, but I tell my friends, I tell my friend, like, check out the program. You can learn a tremendous amount. Kevin, the experience he has. Tom over there, they got some great guests out there. Randy Frederick, who is at Schwab. Um, he used to do a program at TFNN, right? Just uh, amazing minds over there. So they got a lot of good information and we're coming into earnings season. It doesn't get much better than that. And yeah, quite the chart for Shopify, man. Uh, some of these equities, when I think about them, we, we, we all got a lesson of, of, of using our heads and not getting lost in the clouds a bit, as in they were growing at a pace that was unsustainable during a once in a lifetime, hopefully, event, okay? And the fact that, do you remember the discussions taking place saying, geez, is all of this growth pulled forward and now it's going to be a soft period? Of course it was. Hindsight 2020, okay? But I think now that we have the hindsight, okay, 
you could have made a reasonable argument, as many did, that it was going to be very difficult for any of these companies, Amazon and the likes, okay, go through it, whatever it is. You can almost pick any growth stock and say, especially geared online, that they just weren't going to be able to sustain that type of growth. Now, I mentioned Zoom. They're just kind of the poster boy of it because they went up from, what, 570 bucks to 600 and you actually got down to 63 bucks again. Now, here's what's remarkable. They actually went back to prior to the pandemic. So they mismanaged things so spectacularly, the likes of Peloton. Peloton's probably the ultimate poster boy of it, right? That they actually did themselves greater harm. And that's how quickly you can blow that opportunity, which is remarkable. But, you know, hey, you live, you learn. This is why stops are important. It's why defined risk trading options is an attractive quality quantity to have on your side in a trade. And uh, yeah, we're going to be back for the open. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be back in three minutes. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We've got markets open. You open up 10 points in the S&P. NASDAQ 100 up by about 70. You get the Dow up by 38. You got the Russell up by about six. Let's see how the banks are doing just ahead of their numbers tomorrow. Whoop, we're dropping right now. <coughs> and 
there's so many influences in this market right now in terms of where are we going. Let's jump and see how the dollar, because what's going on? So you have currency action. You have yield action. Yeah, you got the dollar continuing to weaken right now. You're under 101. A lot of that being driven by the euro. You're spiking up to highs that we haven't seen in the better part of a year in the euro, above 110.50 right now in the euro. And that, of course, tied to the action in the yields. But we've had a little bit of a reprieve, actually, in the last few minutes in terms of up to 116.02. The 10-year now back to 115.30. And if we check that out, that's talking about a yield of about 3.39%. 3.39% the yield on the 10-year. All right. So we were talking a little bit of money supply, right? Now, this is M2 year over year. So what you have is, this is econ, okay, you got, or finance, what is it, econ, right? I think it's econ. What would M, when did we learn? Maybe somebody, some of the other has got to got it. I think it's econ, right? Uh, M1 is basic money, okay? So M1 is coins and currency in circulation, checkable deposits and traveler's checks, money and banking. Yeah, I was learning about this in high school, though, I think. So I think that was – we didn't have money in banking 101. That's college. I think we learned it in econ to start things off. Finance was somewhere in there. Maybe I'm getting lost. But M1, coins and currency in circulation, checkable deposits, traveler's checks, straight out cash, M1, okay? Then you go to M2. Let's see. Let me get this right. Okay, perfect. Now let's even slide over it so you can check out as – M2, which is the chart that we're looking at, okay, is the Federal Reserve's estimate of total money supply, including M1, okay, which is the cash people have on hand, plus money in checking accounts, saving accounts, other short-term vehicles, such as CDs, that's where you get away from M1, okay, retirement account balances, and CDs, or time deposits, above 100000 are omitted. So the way you can read that, right, is it's a measure of the money supply that includes cash, checking deposits, other types of deposits that are readily convertible to cash, such as CDs. Now, the reason why they have that 100,000 in there, right, is because this is really cash circulating. It's not supposed to be big money that's not gonna be a player in the economy for cash circulating. And when you get above that, it's probably not gonna be cash, You can um, a CD or investments that you are converting to have the cash being cycled in the economy. OK. Now, then you have M3 and M3 includes all the above as M1, M2 includes M1, right? M3 includes M1 and 2. They all expand as you get higher in the M1, 2, 3. M3 would include all of the prior plus large institutional cash deposits. So that's not what's in M2. OK, now gold is not counted in any of them. Gold is no longer used as a common currency. It's interesting in light of the action we're getting in gold right now, right? So taking a look at this chart, folks, we're looking at M2, okay? And again, when we're talking about M2, we're talking about cash deposits, CDs, under 100 grand. It's a very reasonable description of the money circulating around in the economy. I'd love for anybody to give me a call to discuss this, man, because I think it's a big number. Some of the reactions have been varying. 877-927-6648. And please, folks, give me a call on anything. My dad had a great call. I wish I remember the caller um, yesterday on his program after he talked to Tim Ord. And the caller was asking, he was looking at different ETFs. One of those ETFs was basically a market-wide ETF for small and mid-cap stocks. I forget what it was, but it was every stock outside of the S&P 500, or even if you look at stocks like the Russell, right? And the argument was, look at that. We got it. We got Bob and Largo. Let's jump into it. Bob, good morning, man. We got him? Come on. No? Oh, he must have hung up that quick. Maybe he'll call back. Uh, this one might get some callers, folks, because, you know, look for outliers in the market, okay? Look for outliers in the market when you see that type of action. Um, oh, okay, the caller was Bob and Lager yesterday. Thank you. Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I, I jumped up quick. Thank you, Al. Um, and so the question they were asking was, is the fund he was looking at was down 33% from the highs. S&Ps were only down 14% from the highs. Say, well, if the market accelerates back to the highs, shouldn't I be in maybe the ETF that has more room up to the upside? It's a great question. I literally thought this is a great question, man. I'm sure a ton of people think like this. And yes, it can be a great way to think. 
but it's totally dependent on what's going to drive the market, right? And what I'll say is that nothing is guaranteed to that essence. I mean, we saw how the NASDAQ 100, how long did the NASDAQ 100 or NASDAQ take to get back all of its losses from, let's pull it up. What's, what's going to be the best way? The Qs? Are the Qs going to get me all the way back? No, probably not, right? What's going to be the best way? Yeah, yeah, the Qs almost get me back. So the Qs from 2000 took you to 2015 to get to the highs, okay? The SPY, yeah, pretty much the same, pretty interesting, right? I was going to say it took a lot longer. I mean, look at the SPYs, man. SPYs, 150 in 2000. He actually got back there in 2013. So a little sooner. Uh, I would be careful with that if Bob happens to be listening anyway. I'd be careful with that one. My dad was talking about he just doesn't like the Russells in particular. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, Apple is turning into the GE, you know, in terms of the hold they have on everything. And I would be very wary. And look at Apple. Look at Apple. Up 1.5% today. I mean, look at this for a second, right? Apple today alone has added $40 billion in market cap, and the market can barely catch a bid right now. I mean, look where we are compared to, do you remember on Monday that we had Apple losing 40% of computer sales, far worse than even the industry? And we're just back down a couple bucks from where we were on Friday. Meanwhile, we've had a market sell-off um, to some degree in both directions, just remarkable action. I would be very careful about not investing in the biggest, most profitable, best companies in the world. That's probably the best way to put it. I mean, even at some of these prices, folks, retirement-wise, I was dabbling a little bit of Amazon this week, dabbling in a little bit of Disney this week. Longer term, okay, the big companies that have strong, successful backtracks, uh, they're where I would want to be in the longer term. Now, the other side of that is, there's nothing wrong with diversification, man. We learned that in the pandemic, most of all. Right. Nothing wrong with diversification because you could think you're in the best spot in the world. And unfortunately, you can just get hit by an unforeseen event coming at you. All right. But pay attention to that money supply, folks. Please give me a call if you want to talk about it. Let me know your opinion, because we're going to start to feel it. And you may start seeing it creep in in the numbers. And if it does, it may creep quickly. But it's not creeping just yet, man. We got inflation and we got continuing jobless claims dropping. OK, no matter what we got. So retail sales tomorrow, bank earnings kick it off. It's going to be an interesting one. S&P is holding up relatively well right now. We got a little bit of a sell off there. All right. Put it back for one minute. We sure did. A little bit of a sell off at 935. We get back 4130 in the S&Ps as our man Basil Chapman says. Look at that NASDAQ 100, though. Yeah. Growth stocks. We got lower yields. We got a weaker dollar. We got the NASDAQ 100 up by almost 1%. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P up about 11. Dow actually in negative territory right now, probably because, man, a lot of the action with some of these growth stocks, right? Let's check on Apple. Look at this. Up 1.7% right now for Apple shares. Microsoft's up a half a percent, but it just gave up a buck fifty like nothing. Google shares accelerate up 1.6%. Look at this run right out of the gate, too. Yeah, look at this, man. This is right out of the gate. They're liking, they're liking whatever they're seeing, man. Maybe it's the producer prices coming down. Um, whatever it is, they're liking it. Let's see how Tesla's trading this morning. Tesla's up about 9 tenths percent. Netflix catching a bit up 3.8 percent. My goodness. Do we have growth stocks rocking? Look at Zoom up 1.8. Let's see how ARC's doing. ARC up 2.1 percent right now. Uh, the 10-year... 116.05. Now, these are one-minute charts just to illustrate the moves that we're going right now. Let's put it back to a 15-minute to see some of the run. And let's see how the dollar index is trading. It's not stopping right now, that dollar index, man. 164. 186, excuse me. Yeah, it's calibrated. Yeah. Two full points from where you were on Monday, man. That is a move in the dollar index. My goodness, I'm sure we're going to see gold rocking. So even as the dollar's traded a little bit lower, we have gold uh, pairing some of the gains as in. We're still up 32 bucks, but you're about 3 to $4 off of the highs in the gold contract. Let's see how the dollar yen's trading. There you go. 132.11. And folks, our man Teddy Kegstat, we talked to him yesterday. We had a great interview. You can check it out right on our YouTube channel. Everything we do, every interview that we conduct, okay, it's segmented out, put in its own clip on our YouTube channel. Just search TFNN. You go to the videos, go right down the line on the videos there. And Teddy has a webinar coming up in six days. It's a great time. If you haven't tried out his Tiger Forex report, folks, please try it out. You head on over to the newsletters on the front page of TFNN. Tiger Forex report, okay? It's $97 for the month. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you basically got 29 days risk-free. You subscribe to the letter. You get it for a month. You gain access to the 60-minute webinar coming up in six days, Wednesday, April 19th. That will be archived. You check out the webinar. You get the newsletter for a month. It's not something that you're into, whatever reason. Cancel it. You get a money-back refund and you're able to get knowledge throughout the month no matter what because you will gain knowledge uh and something from this webinar man with everything going on in these markets folks now is an especially important time to understand how currencies are moving things how they're related to yields and how they all tie together um, because you're seeing it play out today the market reaction is gonna matter when you have this type of movement in the dollar and in yields because boy I mean, I can't stay. Look at the yen, right? 133.25, we're dropping out of bed just like that. And that drop starts at about 8 o'clock in the morning this morning. 
So we'll see. As our man Basil Chapman says, the day is young. And it's a little bit of a sputter out of the gate. That's what I would say, man. These were some great numbers. You don't, we're not, I mean, could you ask for a better head, head, excuse me, headline year over year number? I don't think you could. I don't think you could ask for a better headline year over year number, folks, than what we saw in terms of, what did it go from 4.9 to 2.5, something bonkers like that. Let's get the headline number to be exact so that you can talk about it. 4.9 to 2.7 from February to March, okay? But it's worth noting that crude's at $83, and crude came into the month at $73 from where we are right now, and we are above any price action we saw in crude basically since last November, man. We're above the 8250 Point of resistance on the crude contract. Next stop on this chart is 9250, man. About ten dollars higher in crude, and that's probably where you're going. Let's back it up a little bit more. Yeah, 9250, right in this area that you were chopping around. That's the highs of October. That's the highs of November, and that would make sense. That's where you go from there. We built some cars on the floor, man. It's going to be remarkable if we push 110 or 120, man. It's getting a little. Premature for that type of talk at 82.87. And we'll see where we go from there, to say the least. All right, what else do we got pulled up? Let's see. Um, whew, yeah, we're talking banks. Let's talk this one, man. We got earnings tomorrow. This one out from the journal. Yeah, this morning? Yeah, this morning. 5.30 in the morning. Deposit crisis sets up a tough first quarter for all but the biggest banks. Now, the biggest banks might have some issues, too, okay? Uh they talk about the collapses. What I love looking at right now is the deposits of these banks, okay? Because banks are going to be facing pressure, especially on a regional basis, for a continued period of time. But what they talk about in here is that the banks for the big banks, okay, had their earnings estimates paired. But the mid-sized banks, it's much more extreme even, okay? Analysts at Morgan Stanley cut their per-share earnings estimates for 13 of the largest U.S. banks by a median of 4% this year and 15% for next year, okay? For mid-sized mid banks, that was for the big banks. For mid-sized banks, the outlook is far worse. They're looking for 17% this year is what they cut their earnings estimates and 27% next year. They have to get deposits, folks. They're paying decent CD rates. I've been talking about it. You can get between 4 to 5% right now on a decent CD. You ladder it out for two years. You ladder it out for five years, whatever you're comfortable on a time frame basis. Guaranteed, risk-free, rate of return, 4 to 5%. The banks have to pay it because they need deposits. They need the money on their balance sheet. It's going to continue like that for some time, and there's going to be competition repeatedly for it which is why they're probably going to stay a bit elevated. Um, when you look at the deposit change from a week earlier, again, I'm always like, why don't you use, like, instead of shades, two drastically different colors instead of just shades in terms of where we are? Get off there. Can we get off there? It's not letting me get off. Let me refresh this. Uh, oh, where did we go? Come on. What happened? There we go. So the deposits... You look at where you were on March 1st, prior to everything imploding, you had actually deposits going up. But then what happens? You get March 8th, March 15th, they take almost $200 billion from the small banks. The big banks get $100 billion, but what happened the next week? The next week, the big banks lost $100 billion, while the small banks continued to lose about $50 billion. Got some of that back next week. Um, yeah. All the U.S. banks below, so about $312 billion in deposits left the banking system between March 1st and March 29th, $312 billion. I talked about some of the biggest numbers for the biggest banks out there yesterday. The 25 U.S. banks gained $18 billion over the course of the month. All the U.S. banks below that level lost $212 billion, and it would make sense. I was saying at the time, who has money in a regional bank right now? especially if you're anywhere near 250000 Just go park it at a big boy and know that you're not going to get punished. 
Um, the banking index, they're going to face some pressure, man. You know, you pick a strong bank that's going to navigate this thing. Yes, you got, you know, some some serious upside that you might be able to make it through because they've all been punished to the downside. OK, but unless you have a real fundamental understanding of what you're getting into there, there's some risk for a prolonged period of stress on those banks facing deposit woes. All right, folks, one more segment. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up about nine points right now. NASDAQ holding on to those gains up 111 with growth stocks trading higher. We get the Dow right now negative by 22. Just taking a look at the 10 year. You know, keep your eye on this one, man, because there is going to be pressure in terms of the markets have competition, man. Yields four to five percent is real money, man, that people are making for every hundred thousand bucks. You're getting five grand a year over a period of five years. You're talking about 25 percent, not even compounded. Put it to 20% if you're talking about four, right? But you don't even have to. I think if you ladder up a five-year ladder right now where you're going one, two, three, four, five, you're you you're at like 4.5%, something like that. I'll talk about it on my show. It's going to be a competition for equities, man, in a big way. And this market, not a lot of strength, man, on those numbers. Huge pop yesterday, little pop today. We give it up. We'll see where we go from there. Now, we're going to finish it up, man. Boy, keep the people of Fort Lauderdale 
and Boca in the East Coast in your thoughts, folks, because they got some rain, man. Fort Lauderdale Airport's closed right now, I believe, to the middle of the day. At least it was this morning. I don't think I've even seen something like that, man. Two feet of rain yesterday in Fort Lauderdale. More than that, 26 inches of rain in Fort Lauderdale is what they got. They call it a thousand-year storm. I hear like those a lot. Uh, this is a picture. Let me get this exactly. That's a picture of EMS trying to drop people off at Broward General Hospital, right, completely flooded. I mean, you just have images that are just absolutely astounding, man. I mean, look at this one, the, the streets. You're talking about 26 inches of rain dropping in a day, man. Um, so keep those people in your thoughts, man, because that's going to be a tough one. So maybe our man Steve Rose will have some stories for you about how he's doing. Hopefully he's doing well in terms of just absolutely a remarkable amount of rain over there, closing down the airports and uh, 26 inches of rain. I said, man, we got some rain over here, um, but nothing like that, man. And it's raining again over there right now. So they're in some woes for, for a period of time, to say the least. Folks, thanks for starting your trading day off with me. We got S&Ps, basically right where we were when we kicked off the program. But guess what? Remember where we were yesterday at this time? Yeah, we got some action, man. All ahead of retail sales tomorrow and the real beginning of earnings season with the banks tomorrow morning. We get City, Wells Fargo tomorrow as well. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for our man Basil Chapman, folks.